but it's really something that God has in his heart and it's been confirmed on many, many occasions. Um, so I want to start off from a prophecy that has been spoken over us as a generation. <laughs> uh, I'm half drunk. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, so this was a year and uh, two months ago when Dr. Chuck Pierce was here. And uh, I don't know if, if uh, some of you remember, but this was a Saturday somewhere, June 2019. Yeah. And the opening prophecy um, was this word from Isaiah 58, verses 12. And... Um, yeah, I've been thinking about that, this, this, this verse, and we'll see if I'll be able to <laughs> utter what the Lord is trying to say. Yes. So verse 12 says, Your people will rebuild the ancient ruins and will raise up the age-old foundation. You will be called repairer of broken walls, restorer of streets with dwellings. I want to read it again. Your people will rebuild the ancient ruins and will raise up the age, the age old foundations. You will be called repairer of broken walls, restorer of streets with dwelling. And you know, this is such a beautiful pro promise that we all can say, but you know, as powerful as that moment was when this word was prophesied over us as a generation, um, I started asking myself, what if if we are the rebuilders, if we are the repairers, it's a lot of reads, you know, and we are the restorers, then that means something that was built is now ruined, something that was uh, that means re repairing means that something is broken and something else that has been in a, in a state of uh, well-being now has needs to be restored because it's not in a state that it used to be. So like I started thinking about that and asking the Lord uh, what has been broken that if you have told us that we are rebuilders, we are restorers and we are repairers, then what, what has been broken? ruined or what has been uh, you know damaged that needs repair so and then that's when um, he took me to uh, Genesis the story in Genesis 9 everybody say Genesis this is the joy of doing sorry 
Oh, okay. okay. Genesis is the first book of the Bible. The first book of the Bible. Let's find my key. It's like the difference is very visible. It's quite interesting. Mm-hmm. Switching cameras? Yes. Yeah, switching cameras. Um, how do I switch here? It's okay, I already used that. It's Mine is the back. Mine is the back. Zilek channel. 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 Zilek so, <laughs> people, you have six. Okay, mm-hmm. okay. <laughs> okay. Wait, a little, a little bit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> Genesis. Genesis is the first book of the Bible. Is it? Genesis is the first book of the Bible. The Bible. It is. <laughs> oh my God, really? <laughs> okay, so okay, let's come back. <laughs> so what as, as as I was saying, you know, I started asking the Lord, uh, what what if you want us to rebuild, if you want us to restore, and if you want us to repair, what what is that actually? So what has been uh, restored? I mean, what has been ruined? What has been broken? So he took me. He took me to the uh, chapter nine of Genesis, the book of Genesis, and I would like to read it from verse eighteen to twenty-seven. It says, "The sons of Noah who came out of the ark were Shem, Ham, Japheth. These were the three sons of Noah, and from them came the people who were scattered over the whole earth." Noah, a man of the soil, proceeded to plant a vineyard. When he drank some of its wine, he became drunk and lay uncovered inside his tent. Ham, the father of Canaan, saw his father naked and told his brothers outside. But Shem and Japheth took a garment and laid it across their shoulders, then they walked in backward and covered their father's naked body. Their faces were turned uh, the other way so that they would not see their father naked. When Noah awoke from his wine and found out what his younger son had done to him, he said, Cursed be Canaan, the lowest of slaves, uh, will be will he be to his brothers. He also said, Praise be to the Lord, the God of Shem. May Canaan be the slave of Shem. May God extend Javed's territory. May Javed live in the tent of Shem. And may Canaan be the slave of Javed. So this is a very interesting story. Before I describe the story, you know, our theme this this time was family. And I was asking the Lord if 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 in light of family, what has been ruined? What has what needs restoration? So we see a very interesting dynamics between a father, Noah, and three of his sons. So as you all know, you know the Noah is the great Noah, the tenth generation from Adam and Eve that God used to save the world. You know, him and his family were preserved from the flood and what's uh, and, and and on. And then you know God gives them after they settle, God gives them a covenant. And they're settling down, and then after they started settling, you know, Noah says he's a man of soil. Man of soil. So he proceeded to plant a vineyard, and after planting a vineyard, you know, he had some wine. And that had some consequences that had his children respond to his actions. 
So this shows us a very interesting dynamics, right? So we see two response to what the father has done. So the first response was exposing. So Ham went and told his brothers that yo, dad is drunk and naked. That's like crazy. You know what I mean? Of course he didn't say that. That's not what we read, but that's how we I like <laughs> And then the other two responded by deciding to cover that shame. You know, you know that shame or that uh, nakedness that come as a result of him being drunk. Mm -hmm. So, you know, as me and the Lord were talking, he was telling me that um, if, if for us as a generation, and uh, I hope some parents are watching too because we really need parents in this, mm -hmm. is that in order for us to restore, or how we've been acting actually to the, the I would say, I wouldn't say the mistakes, but the, yeah, for a lack of better words, I would say the mistakes of the previous generation is by two ways. Mm -hmm. Some of us have exposed, and some of us have chosen to cover. Mm -hmm. And, but as a result of the exposing, there has been a lot of grief and the uh, curse that has come upon because when, when Noah awoke, it says, and he, had, he found out that his son exposed him, he actually cursed him, you know, and he cursed him for me in a very unnatural way because asking, cursing your own son to be a slave to, to his brothers, it's kind of, uh, it's, it's hard, right? It's rough, yeah, that's the word. It's rough and um, because, you know, that's not the heart of, uh, creation, as you know, because you know, when God actually um, restored uh, the covenant to Noah, he, he told them uh, in verse, this is chapter 9, verse 1, it says, God bless Noah and his sons, saying to them, to his sons, know, know this, be fruitful and increase in number and fill the earth. This was the same promise he gave Adam and Eve, which was 10 generations away uh, before. Uh, so, this kind of discourse kind of brought um, kind of a, a hierarchy, a slave master thing between siblings, you know, and you can tell this, and you can read throughout, especially the Old Testament, how that continues. And, um, and that's really not the heart of God. So what, uh, so this is, this is what happened. So three sons, responded to their fathers in a different way. Two decided to cover, one exposed. And as the result of the exposing was cursed, and then when they when the, those those the two that covered, blessing came. But I, I I really believe in my heart that as the restorers of this generation and as that has been the prophecy and the promise over our lives, what we are asked to do as we're restoring and as we're rebuilding and I, I love those the rewords but um and re we restore repair and rebuild uh is that our attitude towards the mistake of our previous generation mattered or our attitude towards what should have been done through our or through the previous generation, which is our parents, uh, matters. Mm -hmm. So, what I want us to do tonight, actually, it's really this is a really a personal call and a family call, is that first of all, I want us to think about what, how we have reacted towards the mistake of our forefathers, mm -hmm. towards the the mishaps towards the, uh, you know, like, call and a family call is that, first of all, I want us to think about what, how we have reacted towards the mistake of our forefathers, mm -hmm. towards the, the mishaps, towards the, uh, you know, like, what, and a family call is that first of all I want us to think about what how we have reacted towards the mistakes of our forefathers towards the the mishaps towards the uh, you know like what you know and a family call is that first of all I want us to think about that what Uh, you know, like, I want to put 
you were yourself in in our shoes, after if you found out that your forefather was drunk and naked somehow, you know, um, and that I know it might come at a cost or an out of grief, and I know a lot, a lot, a lot of parents and grandparents and spiritual mothers and fathers have been grieved on different levels and different uh, accounts, but I want to encourage you to extend forgiveness and uh, to lift up the curse upon the generation. Because even in our nation, as we see, we see a lot of rivalry and one trying to be a master to another. That spirit, for me, I believe has come from one, a certain part being cursed and a certain part being blessed. And I want you as a father and a mother to lift that curse off and to forgive us. We're asking you to forgive us because we, honestly, I feel this so heavy and it's like, God, just roll. <laughs> um, it's that it's very important that we have your blessing. Yes, we have messed up. Yes, you, you've seen us. You've seen us. Maybe we've seen you or we, you've seen how bad we can be to you. And maybe we've caused so much pain. Maybe um, even we... we I don't know, we exposed you in public, and that was a public humiliation and, and whatnot, but I really believe that the Lord's heart is for you to bless us, but you have to, for, you, we, we are asking for forgiveness so that you can bless us. And another dimension of this is that please don't run away because we've seen your nakedness. Don't defend yourself because we've seen your nakedness. Because the only way we're able to cover your nakedness is be when we're aware of it. You know, we don't have to see it just like like Japheth and uh, Shem have done. Yeah. You know, we don't we don't have to come see it and point our fingers and say this and that. But it's important for us to see it so we can cover it. Maybe maybe as as a mother, as a father. As a spiritual mother, as a, a spiritual father, maybe you felt ashamed because we were aware of your nakedness. Maybe you were humiliated that you, you, in, you know, it could be just one moment of slip up. That kind of like twisted the whole fam family dynamic. There's, there's so many factors. Um, and, and of course, I say this with honestly, like with humility and with so much caution because I know. The, the dynamics of different families are, you know, different, and and some are easier than others. Some are some is tough, and you know, like I know some have unbeliever parents. You know, some there are no parents. Some have uh, a mom only or a dad only. Uh, some have abusive parents. You know, but um, we know we want to let you know we know, and it's okay that we know. That's the only way we can cover. And and please don't run away. Please don't don't defend. Don't cover. Uh, but allow us to cover you. And and when you're awoke, when you when you when you get back up, which is a promise, when you get back up from that state of nakedness, that we want to be able to receive a blessing. Um, um, honestly, that's that's the heart of Jesus. That's the heart of the Father today. And um, because you know, it really takes it really takes a family to rebuild. And one of the best examples I think Miso has mentioned it in one of his sermons the past few weeks is that it takes family to rebuild. And the best example is found in Nehemiah 4:13. And and he uh, he told them uh, he let me read it that's better. Nehemiah 4:13 uh, says. Uh, so this was like the people started because the opposition was strong uh, for on the Israelites to not build the wall of Jerusalem. You know, oppositions were like going uh, crazy, and people were like uh, telling me, like from like, for example, verse 11, say, "All our enemies said before they know it or see us, we will be right there among them and we'll kill them and put an end to the work." You know, then the Jews who lived near them came and told us. Ten times more. Wherever you turn, they will attack us. This was when the when the fight was intense. And this is what Nehemiah did. And Nehemiah, comforter, he's the Holy Spirit. Anyways, that's another thing. But he really is the, the 
or other. Um, therefore, it says, I stationed some of the people behind the lowest point of the wall at the exposed places. At what places? Exposed. At the exposed places, posting them by families yes. with swords, spears, and bows. He stationed them by families. Mm. So for us, when the when the attack grew stronger, what he did was like, okay, let's bring out the families. Let's post the families at the exposed places. So for us, it takes it's gonna take families to for us to be the rebuilders, yeah. the restorers, and the repairers of the ancient ruins, you know? So it's gonna take family, but for the family to function. There needs to be a choice from the younger generation to choose to cover, not yeah. expose. Yeah. But yeah. from the older generation to to recognize that we actually see the exposed places and we and for them not to hide or run or defend, but to be so we can cover. But also for the times that we've exposed them and they've been wounded, to forgive us, to release us, and to bless us because we want that mm -hmm. and the beautiful part of this is that when all this is done this is what's gonna happen are you guys ready what's with the melody today it's cookies folk guys cookies folk so um uh the promise or the fulfillment of this will be found in isaiah 60 wow. verses 18 guys no i feel like standing for this <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, Oops. Oops. All right. Are we ready? Yes. It says, No longer will violence be heard in your land. Preach. No ruin or destruction within your borders. Mm -hmm. But you will call your walls yeah. salvation and your gates praise. Guys, I have to read this. Because as long as we're hearing violence, that means there needs to be some repairing, restoring, rebuilding that needs to take place, right? Yeah. So for the but the promise is that no longer will violence be heard in your land. Yeah. Guys, we just had violence a month and something. Yeah. We have some work to do. <laughs> no, even as we speak. No longer will violence be heard in your land, no ruin or destruction within your borders. Borders are basically the walls and the gates. This is because concerning the But you will call your walls salvation and your gates praise. So this is the heart of God for us tonight. I really pray and hope that you've caught the heart of God. God is in the, pro in the in the business of rebuilding, restoring, and repairing. But it's going to take families to do that. But families to do that, we as a generation, we need to choose to cover. And then the, 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 the previous generation, parents, need to bless us regardless. Forgive us first for the times that we have exposed them. But bless us. We want you to bless us. Mm -hmm. And we want to cover you. Mm -hmm. um, honestly, this is the heart of God, the echo of his heart. And I want this to be the tone of the camp today, the camp this, yeah. this, this season, this, this five days, and that um, we would start walking and tuning our hearts mm -hmm. with that. that Amen. You know, we're not here to, to say, oh, he did this, they did this, if they hadn't do that, then, mm -hmm. no, 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 that stop, stop it. Cover. When you cover, don't even look. Go backwards like they did and just cover. Your responsibility is to cover. Because, you know, before this moment, Noah was the great Noah. Like, Noah was the Noah that actually, right? Built an ark, friend of God. You know, it was that moment, window of exposure, that had left him vulnerable to his kids. And it really mattered how they responded, and that because they were the only people left on earth, whatever he spoke over them stayed for the rest of the generation. So it really, really matters. 
Um, really, really matters. And please tune your hearts, young people, tune your hearts to cover. Repent if there has been moments of exposing. This may not even up, may not be just for your parents, but it could be for your older siblings, aunties, whatever, spiritual leaders, whatever that is. But just tune your heart and, and align your heart with that, because that's the heart of the Father. But parents and spiritual fathers and mothers, please bless the generation. Please forgive the generation because we want to rebuild. We want to see a nation. Ooh, we want to see a continent. We want to see a, a world that violence might sum up. That we will call our wall salvation and our gates praise. That's the nation we want to see. That's the continent we want to see. So let's just take um, two minutes in prayer and we'll close. So three minutes in prayer. I want to give you a minute to just search your heart with the Holy Spirit. And um, yeah. Oh yeah, one thing that um, one thing that I want to urge the generation is to also not be negligent of the nakedness you see. Sometimes we see it and, and maybe we may not expose it, but we're negligent about it. That's as bad as exposing it, because you're not doing anything about it. That's one negligence. The other, the other thing could be also we're so attached to families that we get defensive about the nakedness instead of covering it. Your task, yeah, your task is just to cover. It's not to defend and write a three-page thesis on how not naked your forefathers are. No. Because that also hinders you covering. That 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 changes your focus to what needs to be done. Your job is to cover, not defend, not be negligent. Obviously, not expose. So let me just give us one minute to spend with the Holy Spirit, um, for us to just search our hearts and see where we have placed our hearts. And um, and I really want to say this again that when I say this, I don't take the madness in different houses lightly. I know some of you might be in abusive situations. Some of you may have been even physically been abused. And it's, it's just a, the, and you're asking me like, how can you ask me to cover my father who's been abusive to me? You know, and that is not easy. But that's what the Lord is asking us to do. You know, that is what the Lord is asking us to do. It's not to not downplay or exaggerate what actually happened. What happened has happened. You have found him naked. They found Noah naked. You have discovered your dad is a drunkard. Or you've discovered that your dad is abusive. Your, your, your mom is this or whatever. But that doesn't change the fact that you have a responsibility to cover. As hard as it is, it's your response. It's our responsibility as the previous, as the this generation, to cover. So, so yeah. Let me just give you a minute. If your parents are watching, please also like search your hearts in moments that you've been wounded by uh, this, the younger generation, by your kids or by the people that you've, I don't know, led or something that you felt exposed, um, and that you've actually spoken curse, not blessing. Um, please um, forgive us and, and, and pronounce blessing on us. So,
thank you so much for your word never returns to your word. Never, it's never said for nothing, Father God. There is always something that is done in our here, even more so in our city. And we receive your word today. It might be, it might not be an easy swallow. Um, but we take it in. We take it in. We take it in. Lord, we take it in. And I thank you you have sent your word today to heal us like your word says. And you send your word to heal us, to heal this gap between our generations. This misunderstanding. You know, this issue, this disease of pointing fingers. Father, may we all. I really don't know about you, but I was just thinking that it was terrible. I've, I've heard and I've been part of so many discussions, even in the house, where sometimes you know you point fingers at one another. Not that way, these are the And not that way, not like I want you in your order. You guys don't get us, and they say, no, you guys are this, you guys are stupid, you guys. You know, we are always pointing and judging the fingers at one another. It's a curse. See that crack? Like we have learned today, the crack in that family we we mean the crack in the walls. We're vulnerable. If the family is vulnerable, then the city is vulnerable. The nation is vulnerable. And the small little things. See, exposing each other. Nobody is without nakedness. Nobody. Nobody. No, we make it look like when you point a finger, it seems like you you are better off. Somehow, yeah. It's never their own. The remedy is technology, nakedness. But choosing to cover and choosing to correct. We always make the mistake. And, and, and God is pointing towards that today. Because He is up to uh, he's, he's, he's up to uh, healing the family because he wants to heal our nation. Uh, and a nation is, is in distress now. A generation is in distress now. Papa, we allow you now. We allow you now. First, we actually become naked before you. Now, in your presence, Lord. But nobody that is hearing this word, be it us, be it the generation, be it you teenagers, or be it mom and dad watching you. Before. We just choose to be naked before you. You never point fingers. You never quote a scripture to condemn us, Lord. But we come, we, we come naked before you. You always cover us. So cover us. Up. Cover our, 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 our parents. Cover, cover the, the, the generation that's went ahead of us. And cover us, Father God. And cover the generation that we go. We, we humbly come before you. In full recognition that we, everybody's naked. Abba, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for embracing us. Thank you for accepting our repentance. Mm -hmm. Repentance is not I'm sorry. Repentance is a complete change of how we walk from this point on. Repentance is complete turnaround on how we've been walking, doing family, mm -hmm. related with one another. So we repent, Lord. We repent. And thank you, Father God, by your word today, that you have cleansed our hearts, you have cleansed our attitudes towards one mm -hmm. another. Abba, I thank you. I thank you. And you are restoring your home. You are restoring your family. Mm -hmm. So that we will even activate that commission that we've been learning. Yes, the family is the defender of the walls. Mm -hmm. It's a stronghold of the household. Mm -hmm. We thank you. Mm -hmm. The family is the first source of influence and domain. Mm -hmm. and, and I love actually the blessing that Jacob uh, was, was, had received for covering. He says, Praise be the 
the Lord, the God of sheep, may Canaan be the slave of them, and then says, May God extend David's territory. I just love that. May extend. Remember this territory prayer? The David even prayed this prayer. Lord, I pray that you may bless me and enlarge, extend my territory. Mm-hmm. You know, territory is not defense. Mm-hmm. You want a Bakari Nava Tanaka. He's not he's talking about influence. Mm-hmm. That's what territory is. Mm-hmm. David was blessed with influence because he knew our God. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we will rise up as a generation, mm-hmm. as the influencer you've called us to be. Mm-hmm. Because we know the art of covering. Mm-hmm. We know the art of covering, Father mm-hmm. God. And forgiving mm-hmm. and repenting. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Yeah. Father, we thank you so much. You are at work. Mm-hmm. And sometimes not pretty, but you're doing the dirty work, Father God. Mm-hmm. Now. Mm-hmm. So that we can see the beauty tomorrow. Mm-hmm. We thank you, Lord. Mm-hmm. And everything is going to be beautiful mm-hmm. at the end. Mm-hmm. We thank you for coming in our midst today. Mm-hmm. Thank you for the work we receive. Thank you for the presence that we have partaken. Mm-hmm. There is nothing like your presence. Mm-hmm. And we are hungry for no Lord. We do not settle. And Father, I pray that this word that we have heard may keep unfolding in our hearts, mm-hmm. even as we as we depart. Even as we go to bed, mm-hmm. let it keep because the word is like this is bread, it's the bread of life. It never gives, it never stops giving. Mm-hmm. It breaks and it breaks and it breaks. The more we dwell on it, there's more bites to take out of it. Mm-hmm. It never runs out. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. So, Father, interpret it to every household, to, to every heart. Mm-hmm. Father God, as mm-hmm. you see fit, let it keep breaking mm-hmm. to every context. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. We love you so much, Lord. And we thank you, we bless you, Father, for our moms and our dads. We bless you, Father God, regardless of any nakedness. We thank you that we are born of them. Father, we thank you for the name that we are called by. It's an honor, Lord, and we thank you so much. It is for a divine purpose that we have come of them, Father God. And we thank you so much. We thank you. Mm-hmm. And we give you honor. We are truly, 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 Father God, mm-hmm. full of gratitude mm-hmm. for the families that you have given us. Mm-hmm. We love you so much, Lord. Mm-hmm. We just bless you. Mm-hmm. Bless the remainder of our evening. Mm-hmm. Bless our family time. Mm-hmm. Bless, uh, yeah, as we may gather some of us around the dinner table. May there be a fresh wind. Mm-hmm. Yes, Father God. Mm-hmm. This just be a new, fresh breath here. Fresh mm-hmm. of just. Just, just, just coming into the room, Father God. Mm-hmm. And, and, and may our, our, our attitudes and our eyes, the way we look at each other, even change yeah. because of your words. Mm-hmm. I love you so much, Dad. Mm-hmm. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yes. Yeah. <laughs> For a moment there, we forgot. We are live on camera. <laughs> Uh, guys, I hope uh, the spirit here have somehow found a way to your rooms, wherever you are. I really hope so because it's really happy up in here, and the cloud is heavy, and it's already raining today in the spirit. And I hope it's likewise there. I'm really excited for what God has in store for us tomorrow and the day after and the day after. So um, brace yourselves, but also. Um, this, Open up yourselves for what God has for us in store. Thank you, team. Thank you, worship team, for that divine worship. Um, so we'll see you guys tomorrow morning, same time, at 9, uh, 9 a.m. All right. Huh? On Zoom. On Shop Zoom. On, at 9 on Zoom, your leaders will wait for you, and we'll continue our Bible study, and then we'll go to our challenge, and then we will meet. Uh, not same time, earlier, okay, at 6. <laughs> Uh, tomorrow, and we have uh, someone special joining us, so don't miss it. Uh, we'll actually have it uh, tomorrow. service will be in the heavenly language of Amarina. Come on, somebody. So, looking forward to that. Have a good night. Top of the evening for everybody. Top of the evening. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. <laughs>
So this is what you were doing. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm-